But it became the doctrine which has allowed the police service to flourish. Some of that is healthy, so that the cash for honours investigation carried out in my time as commissioner is indication that, that no one is above the law. It's inconceivable in a number of countries that that kind of investigation could have taken place. Some of it was very unhealthy. Uh, in the 1980s, there was a scandal in the Birmingham Children's Hospital when a number of, of babies died because there were a lack of nurses and lack of equipment. And the then Secretary of State for Health, one Edwina Curry, was almost torn to pieces on the floor of the House of Commons. Accountability. Uh, shortly afterwards, West Midlands police shot dead a toddler in an armed raid by mistake. And Willie Whitelaw, the Home Secretary, said it was an operational matter for the Chief Constable, and that was the end of the discussion. I don't think that's quite where we want to be. But some things began to change. Uh, I think the miners' strike was a key moment in the history of British policing in which the police were seen to be too close to government. Mm -hmm. Then Tony Blair famously made the remark in 1993 about being tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime in the aftermath of the James Bulger case. Uh, and suddenly, what had been a banker, political certainty for the Conservatives, law and order, was stolen by Labour, and a competition began. In election tougher on crime. Then the 24-hour media arrived, always wanting to be tougher on crime, with the effect that by 2007, a Mori poll across the world showed that crime and antisocial behaviour was more of a concern to the British people than to the citizens of any other developed country, including the United States uh, or Europe. And then lastly came terrorism, the 90-day debate, and an extraordinary moment of political cross-dressing in which the, uh, the, the Conservatives became the Libertarians and the Labour Party became the Authoritarians and the police were caught straight in the middle. And that has led to a strand of Conservative thinking uh, which I'll come to in a moment, about accountability, police accountability, uh, which I think takes us right back to the debates where Peel started, about who would hold these people to account. And there is no doubt the Conservatives are clear and right that there's a problem of legitimacy and accountability in the current structures, probably because the structures are a chief officer, a home secretary, and a police authority, uh, in a system of governance and nobody knows who are the police authority or where they are or when they meet or what they do. They know about a Home Secretary and they know about a Chief Officer but they don't know about anybody else. And the problems facing the police at the moment are this problem of accountability with different parties uh, putting forward new ideas about how accountability should occur. One of those is the Conservative idea which I do object to, not because it's conservative idea, but because I think it's a wrong idea, which is to replace police authorities by a single Ill directly elected person who will be in political control of the police service. I think that absolutely directly strikes to the heart of operational independence. I told the Labour Party uh, when I was commissioner that I didn't like their idea about elected police authorities themselves, which was their new plan, but the directly elected single person seems to me to be wrong. And then the other issue that's facing the police it is rapidly becoming unaffordable. The police service costs £10 billion a year. Its mission is being driven very hard in two separate directions towards counter-terrorism at one end, which is enormously resource expensive, uh, and secondly towards uh, antisocial behaviour and local policing at the other. Uh, and something is going to have to give in the current financial climate. My belief is that that give uh, is that we need to get away from the police service being largely composed of very expensive police officers uh, and reduce the number of police officers and replace them with a series of people who do different parts of the job. I mean, not everybody in the National Health Service is a doctor uh, and to have the idea that in the police service should be a police officer may also be a mistake. But that hits directly towards the political um, machismo of officer numbers. People are the, 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 what political parties have promised over the years have been more and more police officers. You don't define education by the number of teachers or the health service by the number of nurses, but for some reason, the number of police officers is a key political issue. And that's why, in my view, um, we um, have reached a point where we need a holistic, cross-party 
review of where the police currently are. Uh, there's going to be a strategic defence review uh, after the election. We're going to decide whether we're going to have Trident or tanks or more boots on the ground or whatever it's going to be. We equally need a strategic policing review. The last review, let me make one further contrast, there have been five or six defence reviews in the last 50 years. The last review of policing was the Royal Commission in 1962. And the world is a very, very different place. And I will tell you at the end, Jack it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <a fitter>. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you, Robert. We've both been around. <laughs>